Now, on the majority of my other videos, I'm usually digging out an old car from a barn somewhere. But recently, I've been working with a giant estate here in California uh, that has a ton of old cars, as well as a ton of stuff stashed away. And it's an interesting situation, so I really took it on to not only help the family with the vehicles, but with the stuff that we have found there in the estate. Now, out on the back 40 of this property was a camper shell on an old pickup bed. And inside of that camper shell, we found this suitcase right here. Now, it was a little tore up. You can see there's a big hole in it right here. Um, you know, certainly well-worn. I did notice this tag right here from Railway Express Agency. Um, and I think there's a date on the back of it here. I found 1938 right here it shows. Uh, and that got me really intrigued by what was in it. Now I've removed the contents here, but I've got some photos of it that I'll post up of as it was found. And what we have found is an absolutely spectacular time capsule that shows a glimpse into one man's life and his trip to China while being uh, enlisted in the U.S. military. Now, there's also some fantastic old ties. And I've gone through and I've put all of the photos and letters and stuff here into this shoebox. And I'll go over some of the highlights with you now. Now, being a car guy, of course, I gravitated first to the few photos that I found with automobiles in them. This one here is fantastic. Me and my car. It appears to be a 30s era Hudson. There you can see he's well wearing a bit of a military style hat. Great pose next to it. Also came across this wonderful little photo here of a gentleman with his dog sitting on the running board of a roadster. One larger photo that I found within the suitcase was this shot of a general store. Now, there's no notation as to where exactly this was, uh, but it's interesting to look at the faces here. And I wonder if these folks are related to the man that this box uh, was a part of. I found a big stack of letters within the suitcase. Most of them are addressed to a Woodrow Azar. Now, it seems like Mr. Azar moved around a fair bit. You can see an address here in California. Uh, here's something in El Paso, Texas. Um, there's another LA. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. This particular one is addressed to somebody in the American compound. And I can't, tin, can't quite figure it out. Tinsen, China? And that's where the story gets super interesting. It appears that uh, Mr. Azar, or Private Azar, was uh, stationed over there. And while he was there, he met a young lady. A couple of wallets were stashed in there, most of them empty. Actually, all of them empty. But within this one, I see uh, an address here, a card, something here in Qin, China. Here's a calendar from 1935. But this photo right here of this young, beautiful Chinese lady is the start of a really wonderful love story of the serviceman and his China doll. Now, Private Azar was a part of the 15th Infantry that was over in China in the late 1930s. You can see the flag there for the 15th Infantry, and here's the whole crew. I haven't been able to pick him out of this particular photo. Uh, here's a larger photo here that unfortunately was uh, torn in the middle. But on the back of this one, American Barracks here, it has a whole bunch of names of other people in the unit. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see a czar on here, um, but it's obvious that he was a part of the group. There's a face here that is circled with pen, um, but I'm not quite sure that's him. It very well could be, actually, because there's no, no higher number on here. So 
that that could be him there. There's hundreds of photographs in this group, and a lot of them show uh, Azar's life in the military. Here he is. It even says, "This is me standing on top of a, a cannon." Here, uh, there's some photos of fellow service mates. I think this may be Azar right here, along with another gentleman. Uh, you can see some photos of the camaraderie that they experience uh, playing around with the different weapons, things like that. Some wonderful photos. This is one of my favorites. This kind of candid photo of a soldier riding home. Truly fantastic. Some group shots everybody lined up at attention. Definitely seems like it was an interesting time and an interesting place to be. Now there's many photos that are souvenirs of what this gentleman saw during his travels. Some of them are quite beautiful, such as this temple. Other ones are a bit curious. This one here on the back, it says bound feet. A bit of curiosity to a US serviceman, I'm sure. This train car here with people piled up on it, on the back of it, it says, War Zone Chinese Refugees. Certainly some crazy stuff going on in China in the late 1930s. This one is a pretty shocking one here. On the back side of it, it says, An everyday occurrence, corpses floating down the river. Kind of hard to imagine that sort of a thing here today. There's some battle, battlefield shots here or piles of bodies. Some soldiers that didn't make it. This photo here was especially striking. This, this is an execution of a man. And probably the most disturbing is this image here that on the back says, a death of a thousand cuts. These are memories that don't go away easy in the lives and mind of a soldier. Also among the photos and other pieces are some newspaper clippings with some very interesting stories. A prostitute dies and struggled to change her life. Chinese executed for telephone wire theft. Kind of makes me wonder if this is tied to that image of the execution being done. Some are a little more humorous. 72-year-old gypsy beats up niece for wanting money back. And then some really crazy ones. Body found in hi-ho with, without head and only one leg. Lepers killed in Quang Tung. Junk continues its trip after probe, carrying five caskets containing skeletons. There was a lot of crazy, crazy stuff going on in China. I can't quite imagine being there and living through all of that. Now, it's human nature to make the best out of any situation. And the best way to do that is with friends. Now, obviously, in the military, you're there with a bunch of other guys. And there's certainly ways to blow off steam and have a good time. And when you're a handsome young American rolling around China, there are some other temptations as well. There's a stack of photos here of a variety of girls, some of them in a bit more provocative poses than others. That one here, pretty hot. And as I've gone through some of these, there's a few where I see a face more than once. This one and this one right here on the back side has the name Mabel. And this young lady apparently had her heart stolen by young Mr. Azar. Now in the stack of letters, there's many, many glimpses into what was going on in Azar's life. Uh, there's several letters from family. This one from his brother, and your brother Lala, it says. Uh, this is from 1939. 
written from Wichita, Kansas, uh, talks about how uh, he wishes he would write more and that mom still worries about him. Uh, there's other brothers, apparently, it seems that uh, Woodrow had had a few different brothers. Uh, there's another one attending uh, St. Bernard College, and apparently he went on to be a, uh, a doctor, I believe. Uh, another one went on to be a uh, pastor uh, or a priest, something of a religious bent. Um, there's a lot of great letters and I wish I could read them all because it's it's fascinating to read but the ones that are probably the most fun are the ones to his sweetheart or from his sweetheart I should say now she managed to either get somebody to write some of these uh, for her or maybe she wrote some of them herself um, but definitely once he left she wanted him back in the worst possible way. Here's 1938 in February. Dear Azar, I received your letter today. Uh, so happy to get it. So he did at least write to her once. I will never change heart. I will always love you. And it goes on and on and on. Good night, honey. Good luck to you. Lots of love, Mabel. Here's another one from June, 1938. Again, slightly different handwriting. A lot of the same sort of stuff, but towards the end, perhaps this is in her hand. My dear honey, I love you. I will never forget you. Never forget me, Mabel, with lots of kisses. It's kind of sad to read through some of these because it's obvious that Mabel had a thing for a czar. And probably it was just a fling for him. Who knows where he ended up and what sort of life he had behind beyond that. But I certainly hope that Mabel had some fun and found love as well. One letter that I found particularly interesting was this one dated, dated August 1st. 1940 from Dothan, Alabama. Now it appears that his family, Azar's family, was based there in Dothan. In this particular letter, let me see if I can get this out of here, was written and sent via airmail. And in the letter it says that this is a very special letter because it is one of the very first being sent by airmail from Dothan, Alabama. And this would have been the first day cover, I guess, for that as well. Airmail, tomorrow's mail today, August 1st, 7.30 a.m. Fantastic. A little bit of history right there. So the letters are all fantastic. From notes from home, the love letters from his sweet Mabel. All of it is absolutely fantastic. The photo array too is just spectacular. From the most gruesome images you could ever imagine to the cutest ones. There is a wonderful glimpse into the life of a soldier based in China in the 1930s. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to track down a czar in any way other than there's a listing of an obituary, I think for one of his brothers online. But the family where this suitcase was found has never heard of a czar. Nobody knows really who he is or how his suitcase full of photos and memories ended up in the California desert in a junkyard in the back of a pickup truck bed with a camper shell on it. So hopefully the collective can kind of come together and we can hunt down the Azar family. Maybe we can find somebody that these photos would mean the most to. I've certainly had an absolutely incredible glimpse into this person's life 
and I've seen not only a lost love, but some of the scariest things I've ever seen. You can learn a lot from history, and I certainly learned a lot from this little glimpse into it. So if you have any information on Woodrow A. Azar, please let us know. Post in the comments. Let's see if we can find this man or his family. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.